Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 9th of November. One TRF terrorist neutralized in GNK BSF personnel killed in border firing. Pakistan PM says expulsion of Afghans a response to Taliban non-cooperation. And Dengue claims more than 1,400 lives in Bangladesh. And now for all the details. Indian security forces on Thursday neutralized one terrorist affiliated with the resistance front in an encounter in German Kashmir's Shopia. Meanwhile, in a separate incident, a BSF personnel lost his life in a ceasefire violation by Pakistan along the border. Security forces on Thursday neutralized one terrorist affiliated with TRF, the resistance front, in an encounter in Shopia district of India's German Kashmir. Kashmir Zone Police, in a post on X, informed that incriminating material, including arms and ammunition, was also recovered. The operation was still ongoing as security forces continued their search to ensure the area was clear of any further threats. In a separate incident early on Thursday, a head constable of the Border Security Force was also killed in unprovoked firing by Pakistan Rangers along the de facto border in Samba district. So, Pakistan government and the army, ISI and all, they have decided that to take off the interest, they take off the uh, attention of their own people from this, what is happening within the country, it is better that we violate the ceasefire and do this. Very sad that the uh, GBS of Japan has been martyred. But I can assure you that wherever this fire has come from, that border outpost, that border post of Pakistan must have been destroyed by now and there must be more casualties on the Pakistan side too. The firing targeting border outpost is the third ceasefire violation in 24 days by the Pakistan Rangers. India long blames that Pakistan amid the ceasefire violation helps terrorists infiltrate across its borders. Well, in a bid to tackle the toxic air pollution in the Indian capital, authorities are considering to induce artificial rain to improve the air quality in the city. Delhi's Environment Minister Gopal Rai has said the Delhi government has already shut all schools stopped construction activities and will introduce or even schemes after Diwali. If a cloud is a cloud, if a cloud is a cloud, it can be done in the sky. And it is a belief that it will be a cloud in the sky. So, in that time, the pilot is prepared to do it. So, we have asked for a detailed report today. Well, New Delhi ranks among the world's top polluted cities every year ahead of the onset of winter when calm winds and low temperatures trap pollutants from sources including vehicles, industries, construction dust and crop residue burning in nearby fields. Moving on, Pakistan's Prime Minister Anwar ul Haq Kakkar on Wednesday said that his government's move to expel thousands of undocumented Afghans was a response to the unwillingness of the Taliban-led administration to act against militants using Afghanistan to carry out attacks in Pakistan. Highlighting that Pakistan repeatedly conveyed concerns about militant safe havens in Afghanistan, Kakkar said despite repeated assurances, the Taliban had not taken action, resulting in government decisions on expulsion of Afghan immigrants. The comments come a day after Taliban termed Islamabad's action as a mean to humiliate Kabul. The de facto authorities of Afghanistan had alleged the decision taken by Pakistan was unilateral and such actions will only strain the already complex relationship between the neighboring countries. And after months of speculation, Pakistan has finally decided to hold election on 8th of February next year, 
well past the constitutional deadline of 7th of November. Experts say the odds will likely be stacked against allies of former PM Imran Khan, who despite being in jail over corruption charges, remains popular following his ouster last year. His political rivals, including the parties of Nawaz Sharif and former President Asif Zardari, are likely to face a tough contest in the vote. Pakistan has been in deepening political turmoil since April 2022 when Imran Khan was ousted. Experts say Pakistan has never seen a free and fair election as leaders are always imposed on them. फैसला अब हो गया है अब देखना यह है कि क्या उसके नतीजे आते हैं लेकिन पाकिस्तान में जिस तरह हमेशा हम यह देखते हैं कि जो इंतखाबात होते हैं तो इस मुल्क के जो आवाम है उनको शायद मैं ही नहीं समझ रहा हूं कि अब तक यह उनको यह हक मिला हो एक दिन कि वो अपनी मर्जी के मुताबिक जो है वो वोट दे सके अपनी राय जो है वो दे सके हमेशा इस मुल्क में ऐसे हालात या तो प्रोपिकेंडे के जरिए एक टूल के जरिए पैदा किए जाते हैं या लोगों पर जोर जबरदस्ती होती है कि वो मतलब जिस तरह उनको चाहिए होता है वो वो सर अपने वोट का जो हक राय दही है वो इस्तेमाल नहीं करते और हमेशा उन पर जो मुख्तलिफ लीडरान है ख्वाह उसका ताल्लुक किसी भी सियासी पार्टी से हो उन पर मुसलत जो है वो किए जाते हैं well, the United States on Wednesday called on Bangladesh to revisit its minimum wage policy after a garment worker was killed in a renewed protest over race in pay. U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller in a statement said, Washington condemns the violence against workers and criminalization of legitimate worker and trade union activities in Bangladesh. The statement urged authorities to ensure the wage decision addresses the growing economic pressures faced by workers and their families. Low wages have helped Bangladesh build its garment industry, which employs about 4 million people. The government, following week-long protests by garment workers, has decided to raise the minimum wage to 12,500. Take a month from 1st of December, the first increase in five years. However, workers have rejected the hike and are demanding almost twice the amount offered. <laughs> Well, moving on, Bangladesh has reported at least 1,432 dengue deaths so far this year, with nearly 300,000 people infected by the mosquito borne disease, according to data by the Directorate General of Health Services. The current death toll is nearly four times more than the whole of last year when Bangladesh recorded 281 dengue-related deaths. The country experienced its highest spike in dengue cases in September with 79,598 new infections. There is no vaccine or drug that specifically treats dengue, which is common in South Asia during the monsoon season of the AIDS Egyptus mosquito, which spreads the disease thrives in stagnant water. Symptoms include high fever, joint pain and vomiting. And the meadows of Pampor in India's Kashmir Valley filled with colourful saffron flowers are attracting crowds of tourists while the farmers are rejoicing as they eye good profits. Take a look. Farmers in Pampor town of India's Jammu and Kashmir are rejoicing over the blooming saffron flowers as there has been a bumper production this year owing to favourable weather conditions. Pampor, which is farmed for its saffron production, is an attractive destination for tourists as well, who flock to witness the harvesting period when the fields look picturesque due to the maroon, yellow and purple hues of the saffron flowers. You can see that this year there has been a lot of good fruit. The market has been very good. The government has also given a lot of good fruit. केसर की तरह तवा जाते हैं। अगर हम देखें तो केसर की बहुत बड़े फायदे फायदे हैं। बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है देखो इनके केसर के फूल कितने सुंदर हैं। बहुत किस्मत वाले हैं जो केसर के खेत में घूम रहे हैं। देखने को मिला है बहुत। कैसे लगा आपको कश्मीर? बहुत अच्छा। Saffron is one of the world's most expensive spices due to the labor-intensive process of picking, drying, and packing. Kashmir's cool climate and rich soil make it an ideal thriving ground for this spice. The Kashmiri saffron is considered much superior to the Iranian saffron, its long-time competitor. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.